Once you pass East 96th Street, heading north on Manhattan's Upper East Side, you enter an area that's less visited by tourists than other parts of the city. Spanning from Fifth Avenue and the end of Central Park to the FDR Drive and the Hudson River, it's called East Harlem, or in more recent times, Spanish Harlem. Immortalized in a song of the same name from the 1960s by Ben E. King. The area is also known as El Barrio, which means the neighborhood in Spanish. Traditionally a stronghold for immigrants new to New York City, in the mid-1800s, East Harlem was home to the Germans and the Irish. By the turn of the century, Italian immigrants moved in and it became the city's first Little Italy. Then after World War II, a wave of Puerto Rican immigrants arrived. By the 1950s and 60s, they dominated the neighborhood giving it the nickname Spanish Harlem. Eventually, more Puerto Ricans lived in Spanish Harlem than anywhere else in the world outside of Puerto Rico. The Puerto Rican influence on El Barrio is captured in a mural on 104th Street called the Spirit of East Harlem. Murals of Latino leaders and cultural idols abound on the streets of Spanish Harlem. And restaurants like La Fonda bring the hearty flavors of Puerto Rico to residents, like the island's signature dish, Mofongo. While most of the stores and businesses from the early years are long gone, one of the most significant to the area's culture remains. Casa Latina Music Store has been bringing the community together with its music since the 1960s. Vicente Barrero and his wife Cristina are the shop's owners. My name is Vicente Barrero. I'm from Spain and I've been in business in this location for 53 years. While well, this is the famous Casa Latina Music, we sell records, we sell musical instruments, especially uh, percussion instruments like congas and bangos, cowbells, timbales, a little bit of guitars also. This is the way it was, 116th oh, Street, many, many, many years ago. This neighborhood was exciting, was electric. Everybody was happy. There were parties almost every day. The population, it was uh, mostly Puerto Ricans and Puerto Ricans, they love to dance and they love to have a good time. So it was also always uh, a shortage, I, I would say a shortage of music because they, they dance to everything. They cannot live without music. Music keeps them together, keeps them happy. Music to them is like a, I would say like food. I met great people here. I, made, I met all the greatest. All the biggest names, Tiro Puente, the King, Tito Rodriguez, I had a signing autographs here, Machito, Willy Colon, Hector Lavoe, Frankie Ruiz, you name them, all of them. It's hard to say that a name that they, they haven't been in this store. Celia Cruz was here with her husband, Pedro Knight, and they bought some skins that they had to take to Spain that were on one of the trips that they were gonna perform there. Tiro Puente, he was my friend, and we miss him a lot. Tiro Puente was a character that was down to earth. He was uh, very uh, humble. Anybody that come through that door and they say, oh, Tiro, he used to embrace them, no matter what color, no matter if he was rich, if he was poor, if he was not dressed well. 
He was very, very nice guy. He was the ambassador of this music all over the world. Europe to Japan to all these countries. That's why nowadays they have salsa schools all over. This sign was uh, given to me by Tito in San Tito Puente. And not at that time, but he came in later and he wrote that. And it says, for Casa Latina, always in the heart of El Barrio with his people, the same as me. Signed Tito Puente, 1995. It is beautiful. You know how many people wanted to buy it from me? And I said, no, this stays here until I'm gone. <laughs> That's Felipe, hey, the great hey, Felipe Luciano. Casa Latina is also a gathering place for people who love Latin music. No, I just can't drop by to say hello to them. I said most of the collection coming on Friday. Okay. Okay, so be ready for your show. What's going on? I know those Thai women are absolutely stunningly beautiful, but... You think about New York now, there's no more clubs. No, there's not. There's nothing, yeah. You're right. There's no work. I'm DJ Henry Knowles, and I've DJed all around the world. I was born in New York and I lived in New York and Puerto Rico. I used to work the biggest club here called Copacabana back in the days, the Copa. Well, all the biggest clubs, but Copa was the biggest club. The world-renowned Copacabana, where these, we used to get like three or 4,000 people on a Tuesday night. I got to go DJ in Toronto, so I stopped to visit my mom, and I always pay a visit to Casa Latina whenever I'm in New York. This is the last, you know, the last place that you really have that represents the music in New York. and. I always have to pay a visit because you never know what, how much longer it's going to be here. The industry has changed and they're dear friends of mine, like family. And I always pick up a few toys while I'm here, some instruments <laughs> to take back. <laughs> you know, they make these in Thailand, but I can't find them. No kidding. But I think they sell them more money. This is East Harlem for me. This is like when I think of East Harlem, I only think of Casa Latina. Yeah, this yeah. is uh, this is a foundation. Music has always been my life because it's Puerto Rican. And when you're growing up, is uh, the family would get together, eat, drink, move the furniture, and start dancing salsa. So that's is part of the blood. It's in the culture. Now I would say that uh, the percentage of Puerto Ricans in the neighborhood is about 15 percent. That's how many left. Well, by right now we have uh, I would say the majority here is mostly from Mexico. You have a lot of Dominicans too. There's a lot of Chinese also coming into the neighborhood and also jockeys, you know. And now it is hard because, you know, with the uh, computers and the internet, it's a lot of the, uh, the new generation don't believe on this. So that's why the business, a lot of the business, this, this type of business went down because of that. Yeah, the king. It's not the same when you go into one of those shops, not taking anything from them. They don't have that, that uh, conversation between the, uh, the guy that's behind the counter and the guy that's coming to shop and tell him what to buy. Is this good? This is no good. I always had that. That's why the customers keep coming back because if they ask me, how is this? Even though if I have 50 pieces and they're not selling, I will say, oh, this is no good. But if they tell me, give me that, I will give it to them. But if they ask my opinion, I will always try to be truthful. I'm going to pick the clothes and watch her as she goes. You know, someday I have to go. Uh, and, and I will be a place that I will miss very much. Vicente Barrero, providing the soundtrack to El Barrio for over 50 years.